some and maybe even all of the most significant architecture to experience in Rome is off the tourist trail. One cool way to spend a day in Rome is to familiarize yourself with the work of the 17th century architects Francesco Borromini and Gian Lorenzo Bernini. This is Borromini's church called San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane. Borromini's dates are 1599 to 1667 and the church itself dates to the 1640s. San Carlino, as they call it, represents a development in architecture where architects used various techniques to make the building give the sense that it's engaging with you in a very direct way. Work of this type is frequently referred to as Baroque. Now, much has been written about how this mode of space making operates, but let me put it to you like this. With a Roman Baroque structure, you're not visiting the building. The building is actually invading your personal space. There's a sensuality about this approach to work and perhaps even a hint of sexuality, as we'll see a little bit later. The interior of the building is small and has a roughly oval shaped plan, very unlike the earlier French church structures, which had complicated plans related to hierarchy and strictly observed ritual. The church is still in use, so the spatial experience has a kind of an intensity to it, and I have a feeling you're going to find this a little gem. The other architect we mentioned earlier is Gian Lorenzo Bernini. His dates are 1598 to 1680. His best known work by far is St. Peter's Square in the Vatican, but as it happens, he also designed an amazing little church right next door to the Borromini church that we've just visited, almost literally next door. This is Sant'Andrea al Quirinale and it dates to the 1660s, so it's just a little bit later. The exterior of the building is a little less provocative than Borromini's and maybe more respectful of the visitor's personal boundaries, but it's engaging nevertheless. The plan is similar in scale and in form to San Carlino, and again, very different from the earlier French style. Now, I've read that Bernini, unlike Borromini, was socially quite adept. He moved in papal circles and he spent a year in Paris where he had direct contact with Louis XIV. Now, never having met the man, this suggests to me that he knew how to get on in life by avoiding controversy, which makes it hard to explain this. This is Bernini's sculpture from about 1650 called The Ecstasy of St. Teresa and you'll find it in a church called Santa Maria della Vittoria, which is just a very short stroll away from the two churches we've just visited. Teresa of Avila was a Spanish nun and she had strange visions which she wrote about in her diaries. In one of her writings, she describes a visit from Christ himself, which she says, left her with a passionate and all-consuming physical sensation. And it's this very interesting moment from St. Teresa's writings that we're witnessing right here. Because, after all, the whole point of Catholicism is that the Word was made flesh. And that's what Roman architecture is all about. If we walk back in the direction of the first two churches that we visited, we'll find the Barberini Palace. It's a building which has a very rich history and has an impressive collection of paintings on display, some of which you'll recognize even if you aren't an art buff. And check out the room with the 13th century crucifixions and the particular way in which Christ's torso is depicted. Yet you're not mistaken in what you think you're seeing here. In the traditional strand of Christianity, remember the word was made flesh. Now, the main reason we're here, of course, is in our pursuit of examples of works by Borromini and Bernini. Each is said to have worked on a staircase. I believe Bernini's is the rectilinear one and Borromini's is the oval shaped one. And this palace also has perhaps the most impressive Baroque ceiling fresco you'll find anywhere. It's by Pietro da Cortona and it features the Barberini bees, which are my favourites. The four places we've been to see might be enough to take you in in one day, but if you have time for one more little treat and you fancy a not too long stroll across town, consider the Palazzo Spada. It's mainly a small but very interesting little art gallery, but it has a secret little gem. This most curious colonnade by our friend Borromini. It's constructed using false perspective. The elements further away are made deliberately smaller 
to give the sensation that the colonnade is longer than it really is and that the sculpture that it frames is almost human sized, whereas in fact it isn't. This is the most exquisite little thing.